right, right on that bank, right there. Ah, came back for it. This is a big fish. This is a big fish. This is a big fish. Oh, another good one. Gotta get that rod tip high in the air. Get him around those boulders. Another dumping, 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 dumping. That wasn't the big one. Oh, he's in the tree. He's in the tree. Oh, out of the net. Not only did it bend it out a little bit, it's now an offset hook. <laughs> uh, I love it. Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today, I'm going to show you what's inside my box and why yours must look exactly as mine does because I'm the guy in the YouTubes telling you what to do, and you must do exactly as I say, or else. I'm, I'm just kidding. Basically, what I'm going to be showing you today is one specific lure that I started throwing about four years ago, and since then, I, I, I all this stuff at the top of the table, which includes some very nice, very expensive Japanese fancy lures, I haven't even touched them. I haven't had a need to. This lure is so versatile. It covers every situation that I would need one of each of these in these piles to cover whether it be i'm fishing for native trout so i need something kind of realistic with a more of a natural profile small hook small hardware and i'm fishing fast water that's shallow so i can't have it dive too deep and then there's plunge pools where i gotta have a sinking bait that it gets down and uh, bleh. everything is covered in this box and it's all the same gosh darn lure and yeah before we get started i know i've been talking for a little bit now everybody asked me what kind of split rings and split ring pliers i, I use on my baits and just to head, head you guys off to prevent all the emails coming through valley hill size one 25 pound texas tackle orange handled split ring pliers they work every every lure in here is basically had the hardware swapped out from trebles to singles and this is a size 35 lucky craft stream drive that's a tiny little split, split ring and a number eight single. So it works with the little tiny lures as well as the big lures. So it's with that being said, let's look inside my box. I've wasted enough of your time as is already, but I just wanted to get that all out of the way. And this is the common side of my box. These are kind of standardish lures that I carry with me be because I just have to. I mean, they're, they're Yosuri pins minnows. They just work. So sometimes if I'm fishing a stretch of water and I'm throwing up into trees, I don't want to risk losing lures I don't have a thousand of. I reach back into what I've had for over the last decade and just grab a pile of them and not worry about them. And uh, yeah. And then there's this guy here. This is a Rapala Ultralight Minnow. Dirt cheap. If there's a log jam, if there's a snaggy bottom, if there's a lot of roots along, and, and I know there's a giant fish. That's why it's got big treble hooks on it. And I'm just bringing it as a just in case. That, that's, that's legitimately the only reason why that's in the box. You got these little itty bitty tiny guys here. Just in case you need that ultra, ultra tiny profile. And I got my clips, some weights, and uh, some lead heads in case I carry some soft plastics. And a marabou jig. Always got to have a jig, no matter what, no matter where you are. So, that out of the way. This is what this video is all about. I just figured I'd show you everything I carry. These are Lucky Craft Stream Drives, which I have found to be the most versatile bait on the planet when it comes to trout. Uh, the only thing they don't do is float. <laughs> it's basically the only thing they don't do well. Um, these have become, and I hate saying this, my go-to bait. This is a Lucky Craft Stream Drive size 35, and it's got the chartreuse, gold black bars pink belly got a little bit of red i guess it just gives them a seizure and they smash it to make it stop uh you'll see later in the video this is essentially the only pattern i'm throwing it's been that way for the last couple of years and it just gets obliterated by some pretty impressive fish and these aren't just your normal you know new you know stock trout you know from the state these are some they might as well be steelhead then you have the lucky craft stream drive 45 and you have the HD version and the non-HD version. These are the non-HD. Just want to make that clear. These ones here, the, the, the non-HD. The only difference between the HD and the non-HD. See those little bumps on the belly? That is heavier. That's lead. That's weight. So they weigh quite a bit more. So 
if you're fishing faster water. I don't just want to go, I don't want to just say deeper. If you're fishing faster water, if you have that real heavy current that nothing holds, the HDs will hold like a champ. You can cast quarter up current, you can cast downstream, twitch it back. They don't burn out, they don't come to the surface, they will stay planted. Uh, that's pretty important because not every fish is in a beautiful seam in a pocket pool and an eddy behind a boulder. Sometimes you gotta make them chase. Sometimes you gotta bring them out of that eddy and have them chase it through that swift water when you get obliterated, when they're thrashing on the surface the second they hit in that crazy current. These will have better traction, allow that fish to track it longer before it's just kind of just surfing on the surface. This guy here, size 35. This is a little tiny one. Very, very small lure, lightweight. Very, very quiet entry when it splashes down. When you cast a, I don't know, a split shot with a plastic worm or a salmon egg, an Amelia worm, you get that boop, and you get like a big commotion on the water because it splashed down multiple locations. These, you cast them, thumb the spool before it hits the water. They go in like a, like a needle <laughs> is basically the best way to put it. Entry, very quiet, very calm. And beyond that, even though that some of these are pretty heavy like the HDs, I've never had an issue where if I had to make an ultra long cast, and we're talking using some of the longest casting fishing lines like your, your, your Gliss or your Nanofill that casts like you broke off further than any braid on the market using eight and nine foot rods and you're casting 225 feet with something like this. I can still get that slack back tight to the rod tip and not have to worry about this falling so fast that I get hung up. I haven't had that issue yet. And again, if I'm fishing swift water, twitch, 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 twitch. Every time you twitch, you're kind of preventing it from digging deeper in the current. So if you just were just to hang it off the rod tip on tight line in the current, it's going to continually dig deeper and swing lower. But once you start twitching it, once, you, once you're twitching that bait, it's no longer digging deeper. It's a Good way to kind of save lures. Even even these kind of baits here. This is a Shimano Cardiff Toga. This is a Duo Realis. Same thing. Twitching these baits keeps you from getting hung up, keeps you from getting too deep. Even though the Cardiff Toga from Shimano is a, a fairly quick sinking lure. So it's with all that being said, guys, I'm going to leave links down below for where you can get these. Really, I, it's, it's one of those things. Pick up two or three or four different colors, pick up an HD and a couple of non-HDs. Size 45, you'll be good if you want to go down to the size 35, you know, more than welcome to. I don't know if that's going to make a true difference unless you're fishing wild trout streams that are real shallow and that kind of deal. But, uh, and these here, if you uh, get a chance, uh, leave a link down below. And at the end of the video, that shows the underwater footage of these Lucky Craft Wanderers, which are some of the longest casting baits on the market. They perform 90% of what this thing does, the only thing they don't do is really handle that really fast current without coming back to the surface uh, because they don't have that, that molded in lip. Uh, they, they do want to track back to the surface in heavy current. If you're in the standard frog water standard current, you're not going to have an issue. And uh, I'll leave a link to that so you can watch that because the underwater footage and the sound it makes as it's falling. Maybe not the best stock trout bait, maybe in the larger sizes anyway, because this thing go, gets, gets pretty big. The small size you'll see at the end of the video that I put out in a second that you're going to see. This guy here gets obliterated. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy this. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, what I just showed you. Definitely give these things a try. I want to see you guys catch more fish. All right, until next time, guys, enjoy this, and I'll see you soon. This is a different strain. Let's see what happens if we give him a little bit of slack. Nope. 
burn yourself out. Beautiful rainbow. We let those strains go. Those are the warriors. <laughs> And he'll do fine. That's a, that's a hardy fish right there. Now the crazy thing is when you hook one of those that are 23, 24, 25 inches and you see them come four feet out of the water and they break you off. Oh, we got a flash on it. Oh, this is a better one. Fish ain't done yet. What are you gonna do, huh? Yeah. All right. Thank you. I just say I give him slack so he can make a run. Hopefully, he showed up on camera when he came three feet out of the water. Those fish, I like to bite them for a second and then let them go. What's so great about these is they'll hang in virtually any current. Doesn't matter if it's going, you know, 1000 ZFS, do that, whatever the flow rate is for your stream. And if you got a kind of quarter up current to get it deeper, they sink level on semi slack line. You twitch them and they'll kind of back up a little bit. If you get the nose up, and then it kind of goes back. But it'll get down in these pools. And you can fish these things in a foot of water. Or you can fish them in a pool that's, what, four feet deep right out in front of me here? And cover every part of the water column. They have a little bit of a built-in action. I just saw one. Kind of showed itself. But they really come alive when you start twitching them. And they'll do a little shimmy like a wander on the fall and the wander is another great one to be using right here but sometimes in the faster water if you want to get it down deeper the little tiny lip this thing has kind of gets it to track down just enough see that little lip that just gets that nose pointed down so it doesn't want to plane back up to the surface And again, in a foot of water, as long as you're twitching it, you'll be all right. That fish I caught just before, he hit it on the drop. And they cast like a stone. Another major, major bonus is you can put singles on them and really keep those fish pinned. Now I have two small size, I wanna say eights on this lure right now. For the bombers, what you do is, these, these might be, yeah, these are size eights. For the really big ones, you get rid of this tail hook and put a size two. And this thing will hook up and stick fish upwards of three feet long. <clears throat> oh <laughs> oh he just came out and bum rushed it <laughs> yeah we ain't gonna be able to pull nothing out of there oh that's too funny oh that's too funny yeah we knew there would be one home in there Good one. Oh shit.
There we go. Beautiful. Let's say solid 15. Good strong fish. Dump some wine. These fish are definitely strong enough to do some damage to these hooks when they're in the net and sometimes before, especially if they get fouled. You usually end up swapping out these hooks on a good day um, at the end of the trip. Or I have another one of these. I usually keep multiples because you can only bend these hooks back so much before they get real brittle. Ask me how I know. <laughs> This is so fun. Got a little opening there. And these fish are fired up. But it is definitely interesting to see that they're not hitting it right off rip. They're giving it a follow. They're showing themselves. And I think every time I said I saw a shine, either a little bit further down in the retrieve or the next cast in the same spot, I got smacked. That fish looked like it charred, like right on the edge of that boulder. It was when it first showed up. If I'm not mistaken. Like them boulder trap. That's also why we like using the singles. Because you can come right off the back side of the boulders. Especially with the number two singles. And, uh... If you get hung up, say if there's like a you know, caddis embedded on the rocks, you'll just scrape up the backside of that rock with the, with the owners. Can't say that about some of the VNCs and some of the other hooks. The, the bend of the owner, it, it's kind of curbed, the point I should say, almost like a, like, a, like a claw. And it's less likely to drive the point in. Like the more pressure you put on it, the more it cams into the rock and drives that point in. But the design of the owner is a little less susceptible. You don't get hung up as much. And when you do, you can usually put steady pressure. You know that buggy whipping stuff to get it off of a rock. Usually steady pressure as long as your knot's good and your line's strong enough to get it to pull out. <laughs> he hit it on the drop, the slack line. Ah, came back for it. This is a big fish. This is a big fish. This is a big fish. Okay, I'm gonna have to go and get this one before it runs me down. And we're about to see how good these hold. He's right on the back of the boulder. We got him around the edge of the boulder. Four pound test. This thing has a lot of fight in it. That's a big trout.
turn his head without causing any weird angles on that lure. And I'm gonna get below him. We're about done with the, uh, the showboat in here. I'm gonna try to get this fish landed. Oh, out of the net. And he's out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I looked behind me. I thought I saw somebody coming. <laughs> and I took my eye off that fish. That's funny. That makes it all the better. Hopefully that showed up on camera. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Works for me. We have enough meat for the day. It was in. It was out. The only thing we could have done is more damage in the net. The only thing we could have done is more damage trying to take pictures. <laughs> and, uh, as you can see, a very shallow net. <laughs> it's bit me in the ass before having such a shallow net. Uh, I love it. I love it. If stuff like that doesn't happen, I mean, why go fishing? That's what makes it fun. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna retie. This is P line Halo, four pound. Uh, and had a fun time getting to know those boulders. That's for sure. I don't know if it shows up. You can see it's kind of chafed up right there. <laughs> All right, so guys, down in the comment section, let me know. Does that count? <laughs> and you can see that lead hook. That's why when the really big fish are around. I like only using one because when you have two hooks on the bait, chances are that the bigger fish are going to smash that that first hook. It's when they get going crazy that the back one gets hooked, and when they bend and flop, it's it's not their mouths going like this; it's their body bending. And you've you've tried to hold trout before; even the little ones get squiggly and squirmy, and they can kind of flex even though you got a good grip on them. And you can see, not only did it bend it out a little bit. It's now an offset hook. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. I think we might call it a day. I think we might call it a day. You know what? We'll see if we can get one more. Alright, now here we are with a, a fresh owner. See how it's kind of a curved in point? Kind of a curved in? And this is one of the smaller wanders. This is a big fish lure. I've caught some giants on this. Little tiny bait. You know what? We'll compare it to... This is the Rapala Finesse. Just to give you an idea. That's the Ultralight Minnow. And that's the... Lucky crap wander. These are great anytime you're fishing. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you're fishing for. But they have a very erratic twitching motion. They cast like a dart. And they'll they'll sink with a crazy shimmy. And they have a very very quiet entry. Now the stream drive that I've thrown before was their standard version. They have an HD which is much heavier for its size. And sometimes you want to work with a, a slower twitch cadence. So it's for that reason I was using the standard ones, not the HDs. <laughs> HDs get down a little too quick for this kind of water. And boy oh boy did we know there was going to be a big one behind that boulder. We were saving it. We never even fished past those boulders when we were standing here. We just had to let that cast go a little long. Right underneath that tree. Right on that, right on that bank right there. So we knew there was going to be a big one. And there sure was. Oh, another good one. 
Gotta get that rod tip high in the air, get him around those boulders. Another dumping, 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 dumping. That wasn't the big one. Oh, he's in the tree. He's in the tree. He's out of the tree. Around the boulder, around the boulder. He ain't that big. Well, he's, he's a decent size. That's that single hook. It's an awkward location, kind of how I switched angles on. So he could throw it. There's a possibility that he could throw it. All right. And again, one belly hook on this lure. Wasn't as big as I thought you were gonna be. He just fought with some uh, some of the panache. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you learned something today. I hope you had a good time watching, and uh, hope you guys had a good opening day. And uh, I was only able to get out for about an hour today, maybe yeah, maybe an hour and a half. So, gotta go to a birthday party, and it's uh, I don't know 11 o'clock. Stopped at a few spots just to see how many people were out. Shockingly, the four spots I stopped before I decided to fish this. Uh, we're empty. There was nobody. There's not a single person here. So, keep on buying them fishing license. Keep on hitting that like button and keep on subscribing. Until next time, guys, tight lines, and I'll see you soon.